<laughs> to a live Monster Talk, otherwise known as Monster Talk Live. Um, today we're going to be talking about ghost photography. My name is Matthew Baxter. Hi everyone, I'm Karen Stoltzner. And hello again, friends. I'm Blake Smith. <laughs> and this is our Halloween episode as well, because this is October and so yeah, you, if you can't tell the, the pumpkins, yes. Blake, where's your pumpkin? Um, I didn't put it out. I was afraid of being gored. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Blake is a pumpkin. Yeah. I thought I was going to turn into a pumpkin. <laughs> yeah, we. I usually put mine out about two days before Halloween at best. So sometimes oh, the morning I of, it's really sad, so. Well, we've got a seven-year-old, so we're collecting pumpkins in August. So, oh, there you go. <laughs> I mean, we love pumpkins. I love jack-o'-lanterns. I like carving them, and I certainly like them better than the uh, what was it? The original thing it was turnips. I think people carve turnips, which is very really. Odd. Yeah. Oh, we're yeah. gonna have to do an episode on the history of Halloween then. I think so. We can yeah, dig yeah. into that a turned bit more. Parsnips when turnip uh, populations ran low, and right if, if nothing else <laughs> turned up. Yeah, yeah. Hello. Turn up. Say hello to the chat up, room. Yep. Hello. Yep. Uh, <laughs> this is going to be a fun episode, and I think we need to state up front that we will not be able to talk to all spirit photography because there are just so many uh, images out there uh, that are really iconic. And I think we've gone today with the the ones that or our favorites, the ones that we like best. And some of those are very iconic ones as well, but there's no way that we can possibly treat them all. Is, you know, we're going with some of the classics, uh, some of the classics. Uh, yeah. That's the thing, I guess, that you could, you could say here. Um, well, so, I think we should just jump straight into it. Uh, I think so, I too. think you've got the first photograph of, of Abraham Lincoln. Have you got that I, I picture? I do. There it is. Oh. Oh, oh no. What is that? <laughs> Nicely that was done. A surprise. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I definitely wanted to say that just in time for Halloween, Karen has released yes. her short stories uh, in a single volume, and this one is actually available as a paperback as well for those of you that despise Kindle. Um, yes, and uh, there is a bonus story in there too. So it's not only a collection of the the stories that I've already published. This is a a new one as well. Fisher's Ghost, the headliner. Yes, and that Thank is also you, a, in, inspired by a true story. So, that's Check right. Yes, yes, uh, an Australian and, legend. And, so, and yeah. isn't there going to be like a, possibly a monster talk episode on Fisher's ghost in the near future? Um, there may be for mm. this uh, month of Halloween as well. Yes, I think so. Stay Whether tuned. Blake knows it or not, yet, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, oh no, I'm I'm sitting here uh, uh, on tinder hooks, waiting with bated breath. So, yeah. <laughs> Better than the I usual. got them both. I got them both in there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so oh, yes, they're, they're, moving, they're... moving on. Well, it got hot in here all of a sudden. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was so creeped out by this photograph as a kid, and I think we can say this for all of these photographs that we're going to be talking about that they were yeah. uh, really, really scary. But at the same time, she is just, creepy. You can't look away. Yep. <laughs> Oh, and so is the the image of uh, Honest Abe in the background there. Oh hell, I haven't um, seen that before. There he is. <laughs> oh, I, I I didn't even notice him. Yeah, with the, with uh, the, uh, the hotness that is MTL. Uh, <laughs> uh, so this is a very famous photograph that was taken by William H. Mumler. So he really pioneered spirit photography. And uh, so this was around the time, maybe about twenty years after the start of the spiritualism movement. Uh, so th this picture was taken in 1872. So he'd already been practicing spirit photography for maybe about 10, 15 years. And uh, I mean, this is a, a long story, but I don't know if we've got the image here. He originally took, uh, Mumler took a photograph of himself. So he says here, uh, yeah, he, he took a photograph of himself. And Oops, when he way. developed the picture, here it is. There was a, an image of a, a young woman sitting uh, in the chair beside him. So he said of this picture that this photograph was taken of myself by myself on Sunday when there was not a living soul in the room beside me, so to speak. So this really kicked off 
uh, a craze with spirit photography. And when he took this picture too, he was originally skeptical about it. And he claimed that he was uh, an amateur photographer and he didn't really know what he was doing. So he went and uh, consulted with uh, some other photographers and uh, said, you know, what have I done here? Have I made a mistake? That was his assumption. And uh, they uh, had explained how he could have potentially made this happen. And uh, so, but anyway, he was working at the time with, I think it was a neighbor um, who eventually became his wife and his assistant as well, Hannah Green Stewart and then Mumler. Uh, and she was a medium, claimed to be a medium. And so the two of them ended up working together and took many, many photographs um, over the decades of alleged spirits. And um, at one point there was a guy who was the head of the spiritualism movement, a Dr. H.F. Gardner, and uh, he really brought Mumler around to the idea that you know, these were actual photographs of, of spirits. But uh, again, it seems like throughout his life, I think he was at some points skeptical and at other points a believer. And we've certainly seen that ourselves. Yeah. It's kind of whichever way the well, wind yeah, blows yeah. Can, can is how he's going to go. Can we talk about this picture just for a moment? Um, oh, yeah, please. Because, let's do. Yeah. I mean, not, not <laughs> only I'm, I'm probably less skeptical about the girl sitting there as I am his pants. Yes, that's <laughs> yeah. exactly what I was thinking. It, that, that, is, that would as they would say today, that looks shop. <laughs> yes. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. But did he uh, forget even, to even wear it, pants in the original? Is that we had to paint those in for decency, yeah, modesty? A little, little bit of a paste up there on the pants. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, and it was even mentioned in the chat room, you know, it's, oh, I'm just going to stand here next to this empty chair and take a picture of myself by myself with as myself. you do here. And, yeah. and and yet and there's the, yeah it's all too perfectly staged i think it makes more to... sense if you knew he was originally without pants yeah so <laughs> yes <laughs> everything makes more sense yeah because i'm sure she was there and she was fading away very quickly yeah i don't um, i don't want to threaten our uh youtube rating so let's just say he was one of the early richard picks was probably what he was going for <laughs> what <laughs> <laughs> See if I can Very make Karen sh shoot tea out her nose. It's like, yeah. <laughs> if but, only it was tea. Uh, yeah, totally. <laughs> but so Mumler was, a, uh, he practiced in Boston. And uh, at one point he moved to New York where I think the pickings were richer. And certainly there were a lot of people who were skeptical about what he was doing. And uh, he was kind of set up in a, an entrapment situation where uh, like a kind of Houdini investigation uh, a fellow turned up and said i'd love it if you could take a picture of me with my deceased brother i think it was and uh mumler promptly produced this picture of him with his deceased brother and then he turned around and said well my brother is not dead so uh you're a fraud and he was arrested and uh, spent some time in prison and then there was a huge court case at the time and uh with a lot of people who were involved, including P.T. Barnum. So for all of the frauds that he perpetuated, uh, he didn't like. Oh, there's a picture. Yeah. Nice. So yeah, he he tried to produce. He went to see another photographer and he tried to reproduce the image. And uh, what basically happened in the end is that he was Mumler was acquitted because there were lots of different ways that various experts said they could reproduce the photographs, but they couldn't do them in exactly the same way that, that he could. So the judge wasn't happy about it, but ended up acquitting him. Um, and yeah, he, they just couldn't completely reproduce what he was doing. And to this day, uh, there are lots of theories about how he did the photographs, but at the same time, no one apparently knows exactly what he was doing. But you, you said he was exposed for fraud twice exposed <laughs> no he was a double exposed. a double exposure yeah, yeah. 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 yes yes yeah. that one was Very nicely nice. done um no Very i mean nice. i have to say going back here for a second the way he started off with that first picture you know can you think of a better way to give yourself the best defense is to set the whole thing up make a fake picture and then go to the experts and go oh i must have done something wrong can you guys figure this out you know, I am very curious about how it is that I made this mistake. Uh, I turned into Kirk for some reason there for a moment. With, with the original but, picture, um, you mean? 
Yeah, yeah. That is, so for him to come off as the skeptic, and then he says these other things that, Karen, I don't know if you remember very well what it was that he said um, about, uh, you know, that, that he didn't believe he could do it and everything, but when he did uh, take the picture, he wrote on the back of it, you know, that I took this picture and blah, blah, blah. And, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, then he was later quoted, you know, and he, and, and he signed it, uh, and he said he was doing it as a joke. You know, he claimed he was he was saying that as a joke. And then when they printed it in the newspaper, he's like, oh, I'm being misrepresented. Um, mm -hmm. No, it's just what you said and signed your name to. That's all. Yeah, and but, and uh, again, I think he, he just whichever way the wind went uh, at some point, he made a lot of money. He was charging, I think, three times what would normally be charged for a portrait. Uh, and, and there were people lined up like Mary Todd Lincoln, who had originally gone to uh, see him to get a photograph of her son who died. Uh, their son, who died at the age of 11 of typhoid fever, Willie Lincoln. Um, so, yeah, that, that's why she'd gone to see him. And, oh, lo and behold, he produces this picture of uh, Abraham Lincoln. Now, I do think that this topic, and Mumler deserves its own Monster Talk episode, and we're looking into that, uh, into to doing that. But uh, I do, it does make me wonder, who are these pictures, in, people in these photographs? Are they people who have previously sat for him and apparently there was one woman who said he was a fraud because uh, she had seen a picture I think of herself that he'd been using in some of these spirit photographs so there are also claims too that he had stooges um, he was paying people actors to to take pictures of them and which he would then use in these these images too well uh, and keep in I mind these of, were these were um, these were on glass plates and took a long time right. and they would have to clean the plates between shots so Correct. it wasn't like with film and soft material where it's disposable this was all it had to be reused again and again so mm -hmm. if they weren't properly right. cleaned double exposures is one of the earliest accidental mistakes you could make and they Absolutely. were well understood before he started having these photos i mean they, it was it was just one of the the perils of doing photography at the time so mm -hmm. I think, well anyway. i do want to we'll just add to this because yeah i think we'll get into this more but uh this topic but i think my favorite story associated with mumler is that uh one woman went to see him she just found out that her brother brother had died in the civil war and she wanted a photograph uh, that might show up her brother and so mumler duly took a picture and her brother appeared in the photograph with her and a uh, couple of weeks later her brother turned up he had not died there was some kind of error in reporting deaths so he was alive. So I think it always makes me think of that Edgar Casey story where he wrote giving instructions to cure someone after they'd died. Uh, the the medium, yeah. uh, medical medium, makes me think of that particular story too. But yeah, uh, so Mumler died in about, uh, I think it was 1884, but spirit photography didn't die with him. It is still around to this day. And we've got tons of other photographs that we need to kind of get through. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I was go. just going to show you. He wrote. He wrote this uh, this book by uh, William H. Mumler, written by himself. Written by himself, of himself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So just like the first nice. photo with, it doesn't have pants on either, as you can see. Yep. Um, <laughs> but if you do want to find a a good book that has a lot of information on uh, Mumler, uh, you'd be looking at this one. This is probably the best place to go, if. Uh, you want to get the latest on him anyway. Yeah, there, so. there are a few other ones out there oh, too. There, but there are. Oh, yeah. That, that's certainly, certainly a good one. So let's move on. Oh, okay. How about that? You want to move on there? <laughs> uh, uh, sure. But it's not are next to my notes. We're looking at the Holy Ghost in okay. this one? So this is uh, Newby Church. Uh, isn't it beautiful? So the photograph that was taken here is a very famous one, the Spectre of Newby Church. And... So, Matt, if you can bring up that image. Are I you saying love newbie, this one. N -E -W -B -Y? Yes. In, in, well, any WBY? Yes. Any WBY? Yep. Okay. Newbie Church. But how will you, yeah, you pronounce it a... differently? Or... No, no. It's just, it looks a lot older than that. It doesn't look like a newbie at all. So, that's yeah. all. Yeah. Oh. It looks quite, <laughs> quite ancient. <laughs> well, that kind of comes into play with this. I think that's interesting because, uh, so this is the um, newbie church of this particular. Uh, place here is the the church of christ the consoler so it's in north yorkshire and this photograph was taken in 1963 by reverend kenneth f lord and so he claimed that the shape was not visible at the time that uh, he took 
the photograph. And that's something we're going to hear again and again. Oh, I didn't see anything when I took this picture of this chair. <laughs> and then suddenly right. this spirit <laughs> appears. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, this is believed to be, I don't know why this is the theory, but it's believed to be an image of a 16th century monk and that he's wearing a shroud because he's covered his leprosy-ridden features. So <laughs> I think it's interesting because if you go back and uh, look at the history of this particular church, uh, it was only founded in 1876, which is relatively a newbie for England. And uh, so how could that be a 16th century monk if this church yeah, was uh, because, only you know, founded as, in 1876? As, as noted in the uh, uh the chat room um that uh, I, that that's a mask from scream uh the movie scream so which um, this is breaking uh, really? the ten commandments because we were told not to make any craven images is that mm -hmm. am I there you go <laughs> west, west, west craven uh, images. but i found this one so terrifying when i was a kid and people would say oh he's nine feet tall look at look how large he is but uh it, it's a really fun one very very iconic yeah, and, it, and the, it is like it, it's so many ghost books. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And one of the one of the reasons, uh, you know, on on the skeptical side of things, um, that it looks so tall is whoever the double exposure monk is um, is actually standing on the step, but has his robe going down further to make him look tall. Ah, well, one claim I've read is that he's standing on a box of some kind. But yeah, that that makes Probably sense a soap too. Box. Yeah, yeah, just like us. <laughs> yeah, standing on yeah. our soapboxes. So <laughs> yeah, are. now, uh, Karen, I do want to apologize that the order that I have things in, because uh, we didn't really um, talk about this before. Uh, so the order yes. I have things in may not be in the order. That no you're worries, expecting. but so surprise me. But what most have we got most next? monks are in orders, though, right? So that's all <gasps> good. <laughs> they are <laughs> nice. He's on fire. Oh my goodness! <laughs> this this one's so, new to me. I don't I don't know this one. Get newbie. out of here. It's you... not a newbie. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you serious? Surely I'm serious. I don't know. Before. I don't recognize this one. No, no. Oh, my God. This is a really famous one. So we're going back to uh, the, the days of ectoplasm and um, seances and spiritualism. Sorry, my cat is attacking the, the door here. Um, <laughs> so this is a famous picture of Silver Bell. Have you ever heard of Silver Bell before? No, but a, I'm guessing from the guide. from the photo, she's a spirit guide, Native uh, Native American spirit guide, right? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Her stage, her stage name is about her. her stage name is Seance, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, but, nice. But yeah. she was conjured up by a medium by the name of uh, Ethel Post Parish. So this was her spirit guide, and this photograph was taken by Jack Edwards in 1953. So it was at a camp, Camp Silver Bell, and that was in Ephrata if I'm pronouncing that correctly, in Pennsylvania. So um, the Ethel was working out of Florida, but when it got too hot there, she would work out of Pennsylvania. And so 81 people witnessed this particular seance, and it was claimed that a lot of people walked around the room with her, which doesn't really make sense. I walked around arm in arm with the, the spirit, that is. But that doesn't make sense because I think that uh, she only appeared for a couple of seconds and then disappeared so i don't and know how she's obviously an illustration people could walk well. around the room with her yeah yeah and you you can actually see images of the lead up to this picture and following ones as well uh where she just disappears in into a, a cloud of, of uh or a cloud or dust or smoke Ectoplasm. whatever it, yeah yeah yep. but uh yeah i mean that that is we really a missed her. image that one well, yeah, 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 nice, yeah. nice. But she looks like, I mean, it looks like she's in motion, maybe. Uh, like, but I'm guessing this, I mean, just since this is really the first time I remember seeing this, like the hands look real, but it looks like it's someone wearing something draped over them, maybe, unless the photo's been altered. But I, it seems like there's um, a lot of motion. I don't know. So, oh, I only bring the history because I truly don't understand photography. So, um, oh, I'm okay. leaving it up to you guys as to what's going on. I really. Don't know. I think it's a ghost, but okay. oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, if, this if, one if convinced we, me. If we step back for a minute, it's like we're talking about Mumbler. Um, mm. The odds are that Mumbler had more than one way to do what he did, because a lot of them look different yes. enough that he probably had slightly different techniques uh, to do them. It's like if you talk to Banachek, uh, the uh, um, mentalist, he has 
multiple ways to do the same trick. That way, if anyone ever tries to call him out, he's uh, he's he's covered with something they haven't seen before. Oh, so like it, he can do the same thing that. here. And yes. Well, I'd like to add to that, that uh, with Mumler, apparently it was said during the trial that he had multiple different ways to reproduce these ghosts and that depending on the intelligence of the sitter yeah, was, was what technique he used to fool them. Right, so. <laughs> right, right. And, and probably the educational level. The more educated the, they were, the, the dumber down he could make the, sure. uh, the technique. That's what Randy always said was that it was easier to fool people who thought they were smart or were smart because they mm -hmm. believed that they couldn't be fooled. Therefore, they didn't right. go through all the sort of exercises one would need to you know prevent right. trickery. Right. Absolutely. Well, here's, Here's another What's one. What's next? Okay. Ooh, so, eerie. Mm. I think this is a slightly <laughs> different image to the, the one that I supplied. <laughs> but this is, is Raynham is. Hall, right, in, in Norfolk? Yes. yes. So this is, we're going, going to see the brown lady. I think this is uh, truly one of the most famous ghost photographs out there. Yes. Beautiful. It's, it's really beautiful. So this was taken by Captain Hubert C. Proven in 1936. And it was taken for Country Life magazine. And so it, it was obviously disseminated widely. Uh, and it's believed to be, to have captured an image of a ghost, the ghost of Lady Dorothy Walpole, who was an 18th century mistress of the manor. And I mean mistress in terms of 18th century terms. So she was a lady of the manor um, rather than a, 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 having an affair um, or anything like that. But she... <laughs> She died under mysterious circumstances, and some people claim that she was having an affair and um, her husband did away with her, but there are lots of theories, and people have been seeing her ghost for maybe about 100 years before this image was taken. And uh, there it was one particular case where a friend of Charles Dickens, Captain Frederick Marriott, uh, he apparently fired his pistol at the brown lady and left a bullet which was lodged in the doorframe behind her translucent form. So... There are lots of claims that the people have seen this brown lady. Um, well, I know but... she's real. I know that well, this is a real ghost photo. Oh, it's I a... know where you're going with this. <laughs> it's a it's a very famous photo, and this is before social media. And while we don't know how many people liked it or saw it, we know it got a lot of stares. Uh -huh. oh, yeah. <laughs> very well, nice. Here, here's how I know it's real. Um, how? When you get down to it, uh i've seen ah it. well there you go and, uh, yeah yeah no that's actually uh karen and i uh <laughs> remaking this this uh picture and uh, yes. she's she's the she's just a little more distinct than yeah. uh the, the brown lady but yeah it but, certainly yeah. does show that, that that can be done quite easily yes um but I think Somewhere in the, the chat said it looks like the Virgin Mary and I agree it does have a strong sort of shape similar to that sort of it flip, really does. Virgin. Yeah, there's yeah. there's a little definitely. bit of an iconic look there. Definitely, definitely, definitely. But I think the thing that's interesting about that particular photograph is that uh Renham Hall was a bankrupt estate and so lots of financial trouble. And um what happened was when this photograph was taken and appeared in Country Life magazine. It was a year after the, uh, what was her name, Dowager Townshend. She published a book of true ghost stories. So she was the lady of the manor at that time. And so here she was. She published a book about ghosts, not only of her own manor, but around the UK. And then magically this picture comes out in Country Life. Um, so it's I came across an article in Country Life, so they were very skeptical about this, and and they said that uh, struggling country homeowners have been have found that ghosts help uh, them to stay connected to a more illustrious past. So <laughs> this <laughs> really helped uh, because, uh, as you know, these places are often open to tourists, and uh, so they were really struggling financially, and this helped them out, benefited them enormously. And um, we've since then, we've seen this happen all around the UK, all around America as well. Hotels and uh, restaurants and historic buildings are all getting on the bandwagon and they're all haunted nowadays. So I think that's a yeah, really interesting. Speaking of which. Interesting well, I was going to say, the, the, uh, it is hard to get a ghost to pose so center a photo like that. Uh, do we have any yeah. idea what, step, what steps were taken? 
<laughs> Matt, how did you reproduce it? Um, we actually, uh, I, I can explain. I'll explain a little bit more about it later, but it did require Karen to wear a sheet and jump up and down. Um, <laughs> so we will. Don't you laugh? We'll, get, we'll, we'll get more into it's that later. Typical Sunday. Toga. Us, toga. Yeah, typical <laughs> Sunday. Yeah. So now we have a beautiful Queen's house in Greenwich. And uh, so I, I think, oh, okay. Oh, I think I think it could be now the National Maritime Museum, but uh, so this is the home of another very famous ghost, the Tulip Staircase Ghost. Nice, Here we that's go. a good one. I love this yep. one. So this photograph was taken by a Canadian uh, who who was visiting as a tourist, Reverend Ralph Hardy, and he took this shot in 1966. And uh, so I I think the house has an interesting history because it was commissioned by the wife of King James the First. So Anne of Denmark, and it was an elaborate apology because he had sworn at her in public. Oh, that'll so cost I'm, you. Sometimes it'll I'm cost you a house. Yep. Yep. I'm <laughs> expecting similar manners to be built uh, in my honor as well. So the staircase, <laughs> right? <laughs> the staircase had been the. You won't be. The staircase <laughs> had been cordoned off, so uh, the the good reverend was not able to uh, actually climb the stairs but I think he he kind of snuck in and took this picture and then dashed off and again he said that the the print and the negative were not tampered with so he claims that uh, it was unaltered unaffected and this is what he captured and the place is said to be very haunted today people hear the sounds of footsteps and they hear uh, children chanting and they see ghostly figures and uh, tourists claim that they're pinched by invisible hands too um, now, one theory is that there had been a maid in the manor who was pushed from the top of the stairs and she died when she um, died on impact when she fell to the, the bottom of the stairs. And there's another claim that there's a ghost of a maid who is seen mopping up blood as well. So that's who this ghost is supposed to be. And I know this Again, one's I'm real as well. I'm just telling the ghost stories and, and the history behind it. So, <laughs> I love the multiple Another hands. Sunday. Good job yeah. on these, Matt. These are nice. Good work. Oh, it's just kind of fun to do. That's all. Well, um, but let, yeah, let's we'll hear more about, about the that. Amityville Ghost Boy. Yes. Um, yeah, this is a favorite. Mm. This, this this is a favorite. One's really creepy. Yeah, I mean, you you see a little boy in there. It's very creepy, and you got the picture of the um, the little brother there that was killed. Um, John DeFeo, yeah. Yeah, and you'll know, see, this is actually part of a larger photo. Uh, unfortunately, the larger photo is smaller in file size, so I couldn't blow it up. But um, right. when you do look at it, you do not see the little boy there uh, in that photo, mm -hmm. uh, which is interesting. But, uh, you know, they make it sound really important. You know, this professional photographer, Gene Campbell, set up a camera. Uh, so, you know, I mean, this was not a professional shoot. This was uh, something that was, they were just taking pictures of stuff. Um, and the problem is, uh, you know, there, let me just get a close up here. You can see clearly there you go. this child yeah. is wearing Maybe. glasses that reflect light. Yep. Um, so no, he if, has demon eyes. <laughs> <laughs> you're trying to demonize him right now because yeah. uh, this is a very live child uh th this kid is not dead uh, i've never seen ghost glass although i hear it is a thing um yeah. when you die your vision is corrected you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah, so they say yes you yeah, were made so whole again it, it doesn't make sense but one of the theories is it was actually this guy who was an investigator uh along box. with the uh yeah he, he was there with the uh, um uh, the warrens uh, mm -hmm. supposedly he wore glasses. That doesn't look like it in this picture. The thing that irritates me is this seems to be the only photo of this guy ever. And it's a profile yeah. shot. They've never yeah. taken it. He's had never had another picture taken in his entire life, uh, to compare, <laughs> but he, this does not look like him. This looks like a little kid. Now, the problem is, is when the Warrens were there, the place was not locked down. There were neighborhood kids that had gotten in and were snooping around trying to see what they could see because they heard about the big 
kerfuffle well, there. They had a so, big entourage, didn't they? There were a lot of people there. There could have been people with their kids A lot of people were there going too. in and out. It was a, a it was a, a disaster for uh, a crime scene investigator because everything was contaminated yeah. by all the people in there. So uh, this just does not convince me in any way. Um, sorry, it just doesn't. So no, I I'm agree. Gonna, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and it's move not, on. Well, none of the none of the ghosts are particularly convincing in one respect because, like, if just like purely technically, how would it make sense if 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 they're not corporeal? How do they reflect light? And cameras require light, mm -hmm. you know, et cetera, they, et, cetera yeah. et cetera, et cetera. But they're yeah. still yeah. super creepy. Yeah, 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 and and and, and, and they're very ghost. compelling. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. To see well, a ghost, I think is one if you thing. You don't understand uh, yeah. photography yeah. and cameras, so. And then that now was this the one thing looks familiar. What's Mumbo. this one? This one looks. <laughs> oh. I was just going to add one, quickly. Th this um, one is for you, Blake, in just a moment. So I'll let Karen yeah, add. Go, go ahead, Karen. Add. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Just otherwise, it will be lost and it will not make any sense. But uh, Mumler, uh, the, the spirit photography, photography hadn't been around that long at that point either. So it really could have made sense at that point that maybe if ghosts did exist, that photography was somehow picking up. Uh, different light waves and, and just different things that we couldn't see with the naked eye. So, I mm -hmm. mean, not so much nowadays uh, as an explanation, but certainly at that point would have been more believable. Yeah, I agree. But anyway, agree. anyway. This this photo uh, is from a, well, it's called the Watertown Ghosts. Uh, there were allegedly two sailors drowned in 1925 and they were buried at sea. And then as the ship, the Watertown continued, the crew members reported seeing the ghostly faces in the water. Uh, people who've listened to Monster Talk for a while will have heard me uh, talk about this case and the investigation that I did into it. It turns out, uh, and this is a very good blow up here. This is uh, this one sorry, comes I, I, from. I'm, I oh, yeah, go ahead. That's fine. Well, that's okay. That that the uh, the original uncut photo uh, was recently uh, rediscovered. Uh, I should say <laughs> by me, but, <laughs> 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 but nice only because I was looking for it. Now, newspapers.com, I knew that a copy of it had been published in the 1930s, but mm -hmm. I was unable to track it down in any of the archives. But eventually, as newspapers.com continued to digitize things, I was able to find it without having to travel to one of the two libraries that had allegedly had a copy. And I was very excited about this. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, the original photo is much bigger and much more dramatic. We're looking at, mm -hmm. um, I believe, if I remember correctly, we're from the, the front of the ship looking back. Uh, the, the ship has uh, sort of like two raised areas and in the middle is a mm -hmm. low slung area. And here it's being completely washed over. So when I was yeah. looking into this case, they said they had the ghost photo hung on the walls of city services, uh, main corporate office. And I was like, why would they have a photo of like two ghostly faces? You can't tell anything, but this makes much more sense. Even if yeah. you don't notice the, uh, the sort of upper right hand corner, the faces in the water, it's a very dramatic photo. So, oh, um, yes. unfortunately, yeah, I'm seeing yeah. lots of pareidolia in it, to be honest. Oh, lots yeah, of faces. yeah, yeah. No, no, hang on. Hang on a second, because what what I'm seeing is you got this guy up here standing in the doorway, which is obviously this guy. <laughs> um, you've got this thing right over here, which is obviously somebody's dog. Oh, a dog. Oh, how cute. Yeah. And then you got yeah. this thing down here, which is obviously either Rihanna or Papa Emeritus. I don't know yeah. which, oh. but so the amount. So of, much detail, so much detail. Yeah, <laughs> there's so much going yeah. on in this picture. It's, it's so, unbelievable. Yeah. Oh, Those ghostly faces used to scare me when I was a kid. So I, me I, too. I, I've uh, really enjoyed discovering that the photo was definitely touched up. It was, it was by hand, someone definitely. incorporated elements, but right. um, it was a tremendous amount of fun to do the research on this case. And I learned a lot and it turned out that there really were two sailors in the story of how they died. And one of the, uh, the guy who went in to try to pull their bodies out and possibly rescue them a great risk to his own safety is, is an incredible tale. And so I've written all there's, that up on medium. Uh, there's yeah. Well, we have we an episode to. of monster talk, the regular podcast right. on this as well. So exactly. go check that out. Nothing better yeah. than a ghost photo with a good backstory. Oh this yeah. And this one's got oh, yeah. it. Yep. Hmm, all of these do. Okay. Backstory. Yay. <laughs> How about back seat? <laughs> nice. That, good segue. Good segue. Yeah. 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 yeah we're doing well tonight.
I think this uh, one's so interesting because it's, um, you know, I, I, I still can't tell if that's a, a man or a woman in the backseat, but they obviously died because they were a backseat driver. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, gee. This is uh, a Miss <laughs> Chinnery, Chinnery, uh, yeah, Mabel, Mabel Chinnery. Yeah. 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 Uh, and this, this photo was taken. This goes back to 1959. Yeah. Yep. Oh, <laughs> and she, she has the disadvantage of this photo was taken of her in the back seat after she had already been buried. So it's a little weird. Um, it. So she's I, not looking I, her I, best. <laughs> no, not so much. Yeah. And it, I feel it. I have such mixed feelings about this photo. Let's let's clear mm -hmm. up one thing. It's definitely a double exposure. Um, this mm -hmm. has been done. There's a lot of research on this. Uh, I actually did a lot of research, which I had totally some. forgotten. <laughs> so are we looking in, in this area as... Uh, yeah. Her collar mm -hmm. extends mm -hmm. through the metal framework. Uh, if you get a really mm -hmm. good copy of the photo, you can see that like there's elements of her that are incorporated into the door, into the metal, which would only make oh, sense if it was a double exposure. The, the weirdness about it is that the photo apparently comes at the end of the the, uh, the, the reel of film, and right. that doesn't make much sense unless it was a deliberate hoax. Um, it, it, the mm -hmm. circumstances that would get you onto the last shot and then to double expose it like this after the burial, uh, it, it was mm -hmm. it's a little peculiar. It's a little peculiar. But whether it was intentional or not, it was definitely manufactured through a double exposure. So uh, I right. always like to give people the presumption well, of, of innocence when they do these sort of things. Well, but sometimes it's real obvious should... it's not. We should add too that the uh, the the woman was uh, Mrs. Ellen Hamill, and Hamill. so the claim was that they were going, I think, to the cemetery to her grave to pay their respects, and that this. Oh, you're right. The per taken. right. The sorry. The, the the daughter. Right. I gotcha. Gotcha. Sorry. Yeah. The, and, Mrs. Uh, Mabel Chinnery snapped the photo. That's who it is. Right. Yes. Yeah. So um, yeah, we should just state that. Uh, I mean, that adds to the creep factor of the photograph that it was taken of them before they were going to to the cemetery and, and there she is sitting in the back yeah. with them always but yeah it, it's a really creepy evocative shot i do love that one yeah i w my research pointed uh and i reached out to people who handled antique cameras uh this was done on a kodak brownie and apparently it was extraordinarily easy to accidentally take a double exposure this was before all the automatic double exposure protection features were added to the camera. And mm -hmm. uh, even when they, they did eventually incorporate those into the Brownie line, but uh, at the time it was much more common to not have them. And the two methods that they have were really easy to forget to use and, and to, to accidentally get a double exposure. So I want to believe it was an accident. Uh, but again, if, if it's true that it was the last shot on the roll of film, it's probably not an accident. So. Yep, yeah, I agree. Well, it's fine. Either way, when possible I, explanations. I, when I was a kid, I had a, just one of those like little Instamatic cameras, you know, where you eh, 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 wind it down to the end. Um, and I could always manage to get a, a double exposure on the last one. Um, I always managed to do it. And I, I loved doing it and being prepared for the fact that I could have a ghost photo, um, you know, at Every 11 time. years old. Yeah, uh, yeah, once I got to the end. So I always wanted to just hurry up, take a bunch of crap pictures so I could get to the end and mm -hmm. uh, do a double exposure. Um, yeah, that's, that's that's my life. It's pretty pathetic. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> Bed sheets and old cameras. Yeah. Okay, another one for Blake. Yeah, this is, um, this is the Goddard Squadron photo. And uh, it's, again, one of the creepier ones. It's not going to be obvious from this shot, but if we do, um, I, I assume if you move forward, you'll get the close-up. There we go. There we Nicely go. done. You can see that everybody in the photo has a hat on, but this guy back here in the background doesn't. And this mm. story is kind of interesting. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's something because uh, the story is that the uh, – the person there who's showing up as a ghost uh, is, was killed a few days before this photo was taken and then showed up here uh, unexpectedly when they developed the photo. And mm -hmm. it doesn't make a lot of sense. Like if this is the back row where the photo was taken, then how is that person standing there? Uh, it's, it's quite mysterious. Um, mm -hmm. it, it looks like a double exposure or possibly that someone, like maybe, maybe they took two photos. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Somebody just walk, walk like a Christopher Walken. Yeah, um, yeah. 
just but i mean it i i i had so many theories i tried to line up is it the same person but it doesn't seem to be the same person their faces are similar but it doesn't seem to be mm -hmm. the same guy and i thought maybe uh you know there were two photos and they spliced elements together which was common you know to fix something because before digital photography people literally would cut and paste stuff in the photo lab to make these things better and these are official squadron photos and um, anyway, I've done extensive research, which we can look into. This is one I'm not Another satisfied that I have. <laughs> yeah, I, I, exactly. And I, I'm not and I, I got a chance. Uh, if I remember correctly, it was Bobby Capel um, is the woman. She's in the photo and she many years later, this photo is taken right at the end of World War One. And then many years later, she reaches out to uh, Sir Victor Goddard, who was the squadron leader. That's why they call it Goddard squadron photo. Right, um, right. And he was deeply into the paranormal. Uh, he believed in things like time slips and clairvoyance and all this sort of thing. But he was also mm -hmm. a very respectable uh, leader in the British Air Force. So uh, he's widely regarded as, you know, uh, an important uh, person. Uh, you know, militarily, you know, historically, and then he mm -hmm. has this other side to his life where he's all into the paranormal and the weird. It kind of reminds me of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, where one part of him is super well respected and part of him, not that there's anything wrong with this stuff, but it, it seems like he had a lot of credulity uh, that mm -hmm. uh, maybe was not warranted. So they were looking right. back at this story in the 1970s, remembering all this stuff from like 1918, if I remember correctly. And so uh you know a lot of time's gone by and their memories may not be accurate so i don't know what happened sure. some of my research involved with did the person really die and there's a big question about that because i couldn't find any records of a person with the exact name having been on the base um and another one that will confuse you is i believe the base was called uh hms daedalus which sounds like a boat but it's not a boat it was a naval bay or it was a base that was on land but was associated with the military, uh, with the Navy. And then uh, okay. it was before the, anyway, I'm rambling. Anyway, I have lots of memories <laughs> running loose here. Uh, the bottom line is I don't have a good explanation for how this was done, whether it was on purpose or an accident, but mm -hmm. I don't believe it's a ghost because I'm a horrible skeptical person. So okay, there you go. That's <laughs> yeah. well, all you need here, to say. Here's it. one. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Karen. Oh, no, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Blake, I know you know nothing about this one. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is weird. Tell me more. What? <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for, I had actually, I have done so many of these research. This I didn't solve have, this case, yeah. but I've written about it extensively. I looked into it a long time and didn't have a satisfactory answer. It didn't seem plausible that this was pareidolia to me. But a lot mm -hmm. of people thought that it was that because it does look like there's a girl. Some people thought maybe yep. it was a beam that had fallen on the end and that was just a face that sort of appeared there. But ultimately, mm -hmm. it turned out that this was absolutely a little girl that existed in a historical photo uh, a postcard here. Mm -hmm. And uh, the guy who took the photo had his own photo booth and he mm -hmm. took these photos of the fire and then went into his lab and constructed this ghost photo and then passed it mm -hmm. off as real. And uh, what a naughty man, a naughty, yeah. naughty man. So, That's yes. making me Absolutely. think of that alien shot too. I mean, it, we're, we're focusing on ghosts and spirits, but we certainly lots of other uh, creepy photographs we could uh, talk about. But Matt, if you just want to mention briefly that uh, uh, was it alien, those alien girls. Uh, oh yeah, back Stan to Billy, Billy, Billy Meyer. Yeah, uh, Billy Meyer. Oh, Billy Meyer, yeah. Be careful. Yeah, he had, he had uh, yeah. Um, he had taken a picture of these two alien women. Uh, that, and they were blurry because, you know, their electromagnetic magnetic field would mess with Always the cameras blurry. focusing. Or they were just blurry as, you know, as humans. Uh, but the funny thing is they match up perfectly with these backup dancers that were on the Dean Martin variety show. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> and it looked like it was taken right off of the TV. So, yeah. Um, yeah it, that this kind of good, stuff is remarkable good research work by matt there yeah to find yeah that out. it <laughs> it is that whole thing of uh we we like to even though we're skeptical i think we like to approach these cases with the presumption of sincerity that when people bring this stuff up 
that they are sincerely trying to report on something they've experienced or seen. And in these or cases, it's a mistake or something. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, but when it comes out that it was a blown, it was a real hoax. First of all, I would like it if the, the paranormal community would rally around and go, yes, it was a hoax. Let's take that off the list of top ghost photos. It's not a ghost. <laughs> yeah. Next. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and that's not what happens. They just keep going right back into circulation. So well, let's absolutely, let's keep this train absolutely. going. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we'll so rail Antonio on about this Railroad for some time. Track. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so we have talked about this. We're a lot crossing too, over here. Oh, yeah. What, what sure, do you think? I mean, uh, viewers are leaving in droves. So yes, we've <laughs> talked about this urban legend a lot, uh, mm. and so this is the intersection of Shane and I think Villamain streets in yes. San Antonio. Yes. And this photograph was taken by the daughter of Andy and Debbie Chesney. So uh, their daughter was legend tripping, uh, and in 2006, I think it was. And uh, so she claims that she'd seen the ghost of a little girl carrying a teddy bear. So that's that's what oh. that's reputed to be. Um, so, yeah, we, I mean, we've talked a lot about this. And uh, Either she the, the, or the teddy bear is heavily deformed, though, because that doesn't look right. Uh, yeah, well, it's pushing it to make it's it unbearable. fit. But as, yeah. as we know, yeah. <laughs> it's unbearable. Uh, as we know, this is a, a was a spot where there was a gravity hill. And that's been leveled now. So uh, the ghosts have all gone since. But uh, yeah, it was a claim going back to the 1930s that there'd been a terrible accident uh, with a train running into a school bus, resulting in the deaths of a lot of school kids. And um, that that was actually a uh, an urban legend or it was a, a true story that was taken from an accident that had happened. Well, there, there were two accidents around that time, one in Evans in Colorado and one in Utah, I think it's Salt Lake City. I'm sorry, I have to, to share a different screen here really quickly because mm -hmm. um, this, you know, we, we talked about before the, uh, I'll guess I say issue with um, the San Antonio Railroad tracks being basically repaired and not being haunted anymore. Right. And so I, I just did a little bit of poking around, you know, trying to find out is are they still haunted and they are still being pushed as haunted um and they're okay. still saying hey uh you know <clears throat> uh, while everyone else is like don't go play on the railroad tracks uh, uh giovanna here is definitely saying go play on the railroad tracks this is so cool and bring your mm -hmm. baby powder and all this kind of stuff um even mm -hmm. though 10 children died in the accident uh no they didn't but um bottom line is Wow, still being told. It is still being told, still being recommended for people to go out there, even though the Gravity Hill aspect is gone. So Yeah, but um, they're, they're telling you what to bring? Yeah. So is that a form of training? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> as long oh, as you can stay terrible. on track with it, it uh, doesn't matter. Exactly. Really but <laughs> the experience terrible. much better. Well, let's go back to the photograph anyway. So yes. uh, aside from all the debunking that we've done about the claims, uh, what's the 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 issue here with the photographic work? Well, you know, it, it could be multiple things. I mean, we have the problem of not being able to see the previous picture or the picture behind it, because Good that point. could be something yeah. on the lens. Um, and so we we really don't know if that's something on the lens. We don't know and if oh. that's an orb yeah uh you know we, we don't know how that happened it is not a ghost but we don't have enough information to say what it actually is and that's with all of these we really don't have enough information to say definitively what's going on in these photographs other than mm -hmm. we know this isn't a ghost we can reproduce it pretty faithfully even using the equipment of the day and mm -hmm. you know you can say that uh there are more dead people on earth than there are live people. So if a camera mm. can pick up a ghost, they would be in every picture. And uh, apparently they are. <laughs> it would be unavoidable. You just have to know uh, where to look for them, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So uh, yeah, that with this one, I, I'm not sure if it was deliberate or not. I, I tend to think that it's probably something with the camera, but I don't know. What do you think, Blake? Um, do you have a bigger photo? It, it does look translucent. Mm. Which but is I, another I'm, problem. 
Yeah. All of these pictures mm -hmm. are so low quality, I'm trying to get a good yeah. quality picture. Yes. Now, the, really the original point. one of that one was um, a lot darker. So this has been lightened heavily. Ah, okay. And I did go in and I looked at that darker one. Um, and Do we know yeah, if it was shot for, on the outside or through a windshield. Do we know that? We don't even know that, to be honest. Wow. And I think yeah. that's uh, uh, that since she's on the road, obviously, when this was taken, it was probably through either the windshield or the, the side window. Yeah, so. it seems to me like it could easily be something on a windshield that's mm -hmm. like showing up, which would explain the translucence. It could be like a little like a drip of water, which, by the way, mm -hmm. a lot of these things and not so much in the photos we've been showing, but a lot of these times, a lot of times people take these photos and they don't see anything unusual. And mm -hmm. then when they develop them, then they find these weird there things like pe people they don't remember being there or shapes mm -hmm. that they don't remember seeing. If you're shooting through a windshield, something that's like close up might appear as blurry and translucent, like a drop of water coming sure. in. So mm -hmm. I'm, that's just off yeah. the top of my head, but I, I know <laughs> that there's many things that can uh, happen during these kind of photos. And hmm. I don't know what the percentage is. It's high, the number of percentages of these photos that were, we didn't see anything when this happened, but we found them when we were mm -hmm. viewing the photos. Right. And oh, uh, yeah. I, that's, I, yep. that's yep. the storyline. Yeah. That is and a I will big storyline. I would add too that this uh, image is just reproduced so widely on the internet, but the same image again and again. No one really doing any kind of, uh, you know, critical analysis of it. Um, but yeah, it, it's well, it's a confirmation, isn't it? I mean, if, one. Yeah, if you, it's like it's like all the the miraculous photos that people see Jesus Mary. or saints or Mary. The, it, if they see something that implies or reminds them of those things it's going to be impossible to prove to them that that's not what it is because even a symbolic sure. representation is in their minds a form of fulfillment you know that it is it's, it's showing the power of god or whatever you know so i yeah. I, I i'm i'm sympathetic Life if you if you death. deeply believe yeah. because yeah yeah it's like and wouldn't it be grand i would love to see proof that there's life after death that'd be wonderful you know, yeah, sure. Biff, yeah. uh, Biff in the chat room uh, brings up a, a very good point that I had actually thought about before as well. The railroad crossing sign is so bright, it's obviously reflecting something like headlights. Uh, yeah. Because I don't know if a camera mm -hmm. flash would quite do that. Um, no, so, yeah, she's probably in a car. Yeah, so. I, I probably so. I, I, I wish I had a better you know, quality photo of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah me yeah, too. And difficult that's the to problem. find it. Yeah. Yep. So I know we're getting close to the end. I don't mind if we go over a little bit uh, just to get through the rest of these, but I'll try to go a little quicker here. Um, sure. This one is a lovely one. Uh, you see the children in the top, but not in the reflection. Uh, oh. This is... I have not seen this one before. This is absolutely a hoax. This is off of Zombie Road uh, in... Uh, was it Missouri? I think. Uh, but it's... Uh, um tom halstead is the oh, okay. spirit photographer extraordinaire he passed away in i believe 2013 yes but, uh, this was one of his but this photo and... was taken in 2016 <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but i know where and, you're going with yes this now. there he is going. right there <laughs> yes you do uh mm. yeah this this is a very easy photograph to reproduce in photoshop which tom was also very good at uh, but this is another one of his famous photos. Yeah. And anything you want yep. to say about this before I go on my rant? Um, oh, well, yeah, just to say, so this is Wadley Hill Sanitarium. So this was the, the famous uh, sanitarium, tuberculosis sanitarium, and then I think a uh, aged care home as well, uh, where it said that there were 65,000 deaths. But in reality, from my research and the research of others, probably more in the vicinity of six to 8,000, which is still huge, still mm -hmm. terrible and tragic. Right. Um, but so, yeah, this is Wafley Hills in in, uh, uh, in Kentucky. So I think near Louisville. And yes. this is supposed to be a photograph of Mary Lee and uh, who had died in the sanitary. Yep, that's one picture of her. Um, but there are claims, too, that it was a nurse that... Um, uh, had died there of tuberculosis. I mean, there are lots of conflicting stories about who this is, but this has appeared on Ghost Adventures and Ghost Hunters as well. And uh, 
Yeah, it is. It's by who, Matt? <laughs> Tom Halstead. Now, now the thing about this is, Tom Halstead is a was was a modern photographer. Uh, he took very high quality photos, lots of pixels, um, but you can't find a ghost photo of his that's high quality, and which is to me very strange because you yeah. want you would want to show your photo, your your authentic ghost photo can be zoomed in on and really examined, uh, but his cannot be. And the interesting thing is, is I have seen slightly higher quality ones than this, and that girl in the picture looks an awful lot like a girl that posed for him on another photo shoot of his where he was taking pictures of girls on cars um stunningly yeah. similar uh girl and obviously someone who doesn't have any problem uh taking a nude photo in a kind of a dangerous place um so yay uh now i want to talk about the interesting aspect of making mistakes as the viewer of your photo, like you were just saying, Blake, you know, you get your pictures back and you're looking through them and suddenly you see a oh. demon panda. Uh, mm. A and common problem. Yeah. yeah no, so, these so photos are always black and white, right? Well, you would think, you would think. <laughs> this one is not, but uh, this one w was taking pictures around her house. I, I don't know why, uh, but she was just taking pictures around her to house. find a and demon then, panda. Huh? Yeah, I guess. And she had them developed, and she thought that it was the uh, the, the company, the, the photo map that was developing them, that they were putting things into her pictures. Oh, um, it was a theory, But to have this creature looking back at you like this and 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 you'll see it you know with you know its eyes looking back now at you that you've everything. been primed yeah yeah now that you've been primed you can see it looking back at you <laughs> oh um, nice yeah so but this panda was not in her house and uh when she sent the photo i had to say yes it was what <laughs> <laughs> As if she's been uh, bamboozled. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Wait, we've got this old one. Um, this this is That's a great wow. one where this you see. creepy. Yeah. You see the guy holding Jesus's head in his lap. Um, yeah. And, and his head is huge. <laughs> this, this is to scale. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus thought a lot of himself. Um, yeah. And uh, but no, you have to colorize it to see. You know, get little, a little cutie. Separation. So you can yeah, see. Little, yeah. It's just a kid. family out having a having a picnic or something. Picnic. Um, yeah. Now we started getting these new kinds of ghost photos. Now this is similar to the girl in the fire. Um, you can see right here, there's a little ghost standing next to the girl. You can Ooh. see the ghost in the other room here. And then you see this ghost down here who looks stunningly like this ghost over here. Mm -hmm. And then you've got mm. a ghost over here. Take a close look at this. It's a little girl wearing this kind of plaid sort of dress. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah, you can see that. And you can also see her right here in the app where you can put these oh, into your pictures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, they've so, done it all for you. Yeah. Yes, yes. They've got it all set up there for you. It's lovely. It's, it's you said app, but the, 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 the CR at the beginning is silent. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly, Indeed. exactly. Now, uh, these are some hoax photos that... Uh, I actually did. In fact, uh, someone in our chat room is actually in this photo. That's him looking out the window. Oh, uh, nice. Hi, Stu. Yes, that would be, yeah, <laughs> SGH <laughs> Productions there in the chat room. Um, so, yeah, I actually uh, have, was uh, heavily involved in making these ones. And the secret to these is basically your aperture on your camera. If you know how to keep your aperture open, don't go in automatic mode. Automatic mode is one of the big secrets. Put in manual mode and you can keep that aperture open longer. Uh, that gives you an opportunity to have things, you know, that are static in the photo come out looking normal and bright and great and then have something in the photo for a short amount of time. And it looks very ghostly and, and amazing. Uh, with a flashlight, I wrote boo. You know, I had to write it backwards. <laughs> So I was very confused on how I almost put boob. Uh, so but I did manage to get it correct. So it's not a calculator. Um, yes. But... <laughs> yeah. um, and then we have this nice Civil War soldier here uh, with the, the the kind of the lightning, you know, over the head there. Uh, that that was in a Children's Hospital in Denver, where you would exactly expect to see a ghost in that sort of outfit. Yep. Um, sure. Yep. And uh, that was just, you know, a uh, sort of painting a, a little lightning bolt overhead that looked a little bit like the entity photos. Um, 
And then we have my hand floating in the hallway of Children's Hospital. Ooh, very um, creepy. So yeah, it's all very scary. Whew. And and yes, it was a very very cold night as well. It was about twenty below in that concrete building. Ooh. So no no heat and electricity. So it was a nightmare. But uh, anyway, uh, anytime you see one of these photos yeah. that says this is not a fake, it is <laughs> yeah. it yeah. is a fake. It's absolutely a fake. Uh, this the, one's the funny not because... is silent, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, the, uh, the the this one had a fun backstory. You know, this this uh, used to be this old Irish farm, and this was this boy. You know, uh, back you know in the days of tunics, I guess. Um, and uh, they, they would see him out there on this farm occasionally, and they got this picture of him. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, if you're an absolute nerd, uh, you, you can kind of spot where the kid might have come from. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, so, nice. Good farm. Yeah, it's yeah. absolutely a fake. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> Well, nowadays, um, too, with uh, Google Images, where you can go and Google a, a picture, it yes, makes it a lot easier to kind of so do much. some, do your own research. But I think that's the, the big problem here. A lot of people just see these things and ooh and ah over them. Oh, this is creepy and believe it. And then they don't bother the looking into it. Yeah, it's the well, backstory it's, every it's, time. Yeah. Going back to Mumler. I, you know, uh, I'm a skeptic. I don't know how this happened. I mean, th that all works together so well. If he had only come up with an explanation that was really solid for who the girl was, mm -hmm. um, to give it just a little more drama, I think that it would have carried even better. I was um, surprised about that too. I wondered, yeah, if he would say, oh, this was my sister or uh, this was a cousin or something yeah. like that. I, uh, yeah. I am surprised there was no backstory to that. But yeah, yeah I think absolutely. we hear that a lot today. Oh, I was a skeptic until this happened to me. Until this happened, yeah. And that always yeah. makes it... Uh, yeah. There is a lot of backstory real. to this photo, though. Yes, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Hours of it. Hours of backstory. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, whew, that one. Uh, and 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 some parts are really sad as well. Like they That's should true. Have made that film, but uh, uh, <laughs> Jar Jar Binks is really the worst part. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the the thing is, uh, that we have to repeat that. You know, we're sorry. Uh, you know. Uh, we had a content warning at the beginning and we're having one at the end. We're sorry. We could not do every ghost photo. Um, and uh, the, the thing to know about ghost photos is they're not. And, you know, and, and the thing is, is we have a lot more orbs these days. So somewhere along the line, uh, the full formed apparitions turned into they become less interesting. Yeah, it, goes yeah. From, yeah. it goes from silver bell to a little orb. But yeah, you know, I'd also mention to you the, the Cottingly Fairy. So, oh, like, yeah, you've done some work into oh, that, too. I have. Um, you but... know what? I've got something really cool. Hold on a second. Let me show you something. Oh, okay. And I'll, <laughs> while you're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and oh, yeah. remind everybody about this. Well, Thank I didn't know we were going to If they're still watching, yeah. Yeah, if anyone's paying this? attention. Look at that. <laughs> I've got the real, this is the real Princess Mary's gift book that the Cuttingly Fairies were taken from. Wow. wow. And uh, like, here, here's the actual illustration without the wings added on. Uh, oh, but what wow. I felt. I see it. Nice. Yeah. 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 Now, what's really like interesting. The whole uh, Billy Meyer thing. Yeah. What's really <laughs> crazy, though, is one of the big advocates for this being a real photo of fairies was Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. The illustrations yeah, that were used to fake the fairies came from this book. Guess who's got a story in this book? Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Yeah. <laughs> and he didn't know yeah. that that's he really didn't know. Weird. He didn't know. Yeah. I, I don't think and since it didn't actually come out the real solution until what was it? I, I think Randy and some other people brought out the real solution in the 80s, I think. Uh yeah, it was you know, Doyle recent. was long dead. Uh so yeah his his story yeah. is in this book it's so crazy anyway this Take is really his career neat on that one yeah he did too bad well that i mean he cool. still had that writing thing to fall back on but yeah 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 is, in, uh... in, in that book that's really <laughs> ironic yeah quite look at yeah. this this was a but, gift but the penmanship this was from 1914 this is such a, a treasure i'm so well, happy to have this just you know, beautiful wow. very cool that's cool very nice very cool but yeah we we have 
looked at, I think, some fun ones, some some really iconic photographs. Um, and there are lots of tutorials on YouTube where you can figure out how to make your own ghost photos. Um, but yeah, there's so, so many more that we didn't look at, but um, uh, maybe next time. But, you know, that's the thing is there are ghost apps galore. So, you know, you've always got uh, that to rely on too. just hop onto your uh, um, your your fun. Mm -hmm. You know, I just got a, a few here. I deleted most of mine, but yeah, um, yeah they're, they're there and ready for you to make ghost pictures with. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, they have to be real if they're done with an app. Um, is what I understand. Indeed. Uh, yeah. Now, I, I also <laughs> want to tie this to uh, there's there's a couple of episodes of, of Dotes that are going to be uh, out uh, live soon here. Um, and uh, the one that we're going to do in conjunction with this one, we're going to be working on next week, which is, uh, I believe, a paranormal activity. Paranormal activity, um, yeah. So yeah. That will be a fun one. And it will be. Awesome. Also want to say, you know, like and subscribe, all that fun kind of stuff. Tell your friends mm -hmm. uh, and on, hop on over to uh, patreon.com slash monster talk and check that out. Uh, you're going to get some good Appreciate your support. content. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and it uh, helps out in any way you can because we're, you know, pretty pathetic otherwise. And um, I want to say pay closer attention, if you haven't, to the Monster Talk podcast, the, the project that started it all. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. under Monster House Productions. So definitely yep. right. And we'll be starting tomorrow. We're going to a weekly format for Monster Talk. So it's every exciting week. Exciting and frightening ah! at the same time, <laughs> like these photographs. <laughs> yes. Yes. That was going to be more great. Creepy. Got lots of good stuff coming up. Fantastic. Yeah. And our first okay. episode is well, quite terrible. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Get the pun there. Yeah, so, Stu, you Nicely might want to listen done. to that one. Uh, yeah. You'll enjoy it. It's about the cards. Yeah. So thank you, everyone, for joining us. And, uh, yeah, we look forward to, to doing this again soon. Absolutely. Thanks a lot for joining us, indeed. <laughs>